Hello there, comic and artwork fans, and welcome back to another RebelScum.com interview. And today I'm here with the legendary artist, Mr. Dave Dorman, who's been doing all kinds of awesome and inspired artwork for many, many years. He's done a lot. A lot, you've, yes. You've covered just about <laughs> everything, really. I mean, you've, you've done, your, I, I would say you're probably yep. most well-known for, of course, your work in Aliens, but right. you're also well-known for a lot of your artwork in Star Wars, and you've done a lot of incredible artwork in Star Wars, but you've right. also done stuff like Marvel, Marvel, Micronauts, yeah, GI um, Joe, a little bit of GI Joe. Yeah. I also uh, doing a little bit of research. I even saw you did some cool uh, other pieces, even like Mars Attacks. Mars Attacks. A lot of and, a lot of and really cool. Believe stuff. it or not, Robotech. Yeah, I saw a little bit yep. of Robotech too. I've been all over the board. And so let's start with. What would you say is your favorite thing to work on? What is your favorite thing to draw? As far as, as subject matter? Yeah. Um, uh, within the genre, what I've done, Star Wars, because I grew up with Star Wars. I mean, mm -hmm. even before I, I was doing artwork, you know, Star Wars was a big part of my life. Uh, so that's a favorite. Indiana Jones, obviously uh, another favorite, uh, just because I love action films. Mm. Um, aliens, you know, all of the things that I've come to draw and to paint, I love, you know, from, from my entertainment. Mm. So for me to be able to, to create these new images featuring all these characters, um, is, is very exciting. So to choose one, really I don't know. Difficult. Yeah, it is very difficult. You to pick your favorite kid. That's right. Uh, uh, but uh, needless to say, you know, each one is different. Mm -hmm. I, I try to approach every piece with uh, 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 an attempt at uniqueness. And with, you know, especially Star Wars, um, there's so much artwork out there by many, many different artists, very good artists, that uh, it's a challenge to try to come up with imagery that, that is, is unique and is different. So that's one of the things that I look forward to, especially with the Star Wars work. And let's get right into the Star Wars. You've done a lot of big name Star Wars stories over the years, uh, from Star Wars Crimson Empire, you've done Dark Empire, two very, very big and popular now legends content for Star Wars. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll see about that in the years to come. Uh, I think Disney's dipping into that a little bit. Right, especially <laughs> with, I mean, episode nine was almost straight from Dark Empire in a lot of ways. Yeah. And it was really nice to see a lot of that come back. What was it like working on, since we're talking about Dark Empire, what was it like sure. working on Dark Empire and um, doing a lot of the character design work for that um actually the character design work i, I did very little of because oh, okay. cam kennedy was already on the project by the time i got pulled in sure uh but i was given uh really a free reign into sort of not necessarily redesigning it to look like a 3d but a freedom to reinterpret the costumes from a flat 2d uh, to what might be considered, you know, a 3D rendition, even though it, even though these are 2D images. Sure. Uh, but I'm painting in a more realistic fashion than Cam was drawing. So I got a lot of freedom uh, in that respect. Um, and then, you know, they gave me free reign on what I wanted to do on the covers. So I talked to, to Tom Veach and, and I talked with Cam and I'd, I'd look at the artwork and see and then I'd choose you know, options to work with for the cover. And they were trusting me, you know, to, to make the best covers I could to to grab the viewer, you know, that, that Star Wars uh, film uh, buff who may be at the comic store and, and looking at comics, they see the line drawing, they see the coloring. But when they see a painting that looks like a movie poster, that's gonna grab their attention a little bit more. Right. And so that's what I was looking for in doing those was, was giving the Star Wars reader what to expect or, or what he should expect when he sees a Star Wars comic on the stand. So yeah, that was uh, that was really a lot of fun for me. And 
you're able to capture such an awesome large scope with these covers and it, it feels like there's a lot happening on just on the cover itself with a lot of the artwork you've done over the years and you haven't done it just with the comic books specifically right. but you've also done a lot of the novel covers as well and right you know you, you the the term not term the phrase you can't judge a book by its cover is always thrown around but you can judge <laughs> the book covers you've done in a sense of when you pick up one of those star wars novels whether it be of course again dark empire or even the the tales of the young jedi books that they right did, right um you can you can just see a lot of that how that artwork just grabs you and you can see yeah. the action here that makes you want to just oh, go ahead and dig right into that book well, even though a lot of those books came out in the 90s and early 2000s right they can still capture today whether you're you know picking up a book at half price books or right wherever you're able to find it no they, they still stand out and uh you know i can i can look back on them and see that they were um kind of a product of their time mm. uh because that was the style that that i think fans were looking for at the time mm. but it's a timeless style and the the books and and um, uh, the publishers have sort of changed uh the way that they design the books to be right. more graphic-y or or to be less uh, realistic and, and uh, more designy, uh, and and that's all well and good. But I think that uh, you know, there's a generation or two that uh, uh, you know like that uh, Drew Struzan artwork poster, and that's kind of what they associate uh, with Star Wars and, and their uh, vision of the static Star Wars image. Mm. And so you know, he was certainly an influence when when I was uh, uh, doing a lot of those covers was, uh, uh, you know, trying to capture that, that movie poster excitement into the art. So what circling, circling back with that, yeah. I, t I talked about how you're able to capture a lot of the action in your covers. Mm -hmm. What is your process of, or maybe decision making when you're putting on certain characters on the cover? Of course you want to capture the main characters that that story right. is going to be featuring, but what decision do you go through when you're putting on their uh, what their accessories, their weapons, uh, maybe the poses they're going to be doing on that cover? Right. Where, how do you how do you make those decisions? Well, um, for, first of all, uh, sometimes I'll get the whole book to read. Sometimes I'll just get a, a maybe a ten page synopsis, or sometimes just a two paragraph synopsis. Mm. So that has an effect on, on how I would look at designing a cover because if I don't know a lot of specifics, I'll have to be vague. It'll be more spaceships and, and headshots. Uh, if there's a good description of a brand new character uh, or a character that I can, that, that has a, a vague description, but I can sort of realize their costume and, and you know design a look for them. Mm -hmm then I'll use that character as, as the main focus in a, almost a full figure action and then do a, a vignette with you know a couple of the portraits to show that those characters are, are in the book as well. Uh, maybe some type of, of background that ties in with the story. Uh, but it, it just all depends on what how much material I get to be able to come up with a composition that works. And each book was different and um, Working with a good art director helps. Mm. Uh, and I think that my background in Star Wars history and, and uh, creating Star Wars art helps as well because they tend to trust me uh, with what I'm doing. So I don't have to be all worried that, you know, I'm going you know, too crazy a direction or whatever. You know, I've lived in that world for a long time. So I, I think that I can, you know, create uh, those costumes and those elements that fit within that. So let's circle to the beginning. Okay. How did you get involved working on your first piece for Star Wars? Not necessarily as, as a fan piece yourself, maybe inspired right. by seeing the films, but right. what in a sense was your first job working for Star Wars? Uh, it would have been uh, uh, Dark Empire if we're talking about working with Star Wars. Beautiful. Now, great, great now, place to start. <laughs> definitely a great place to start. However, there's a caveat to that. Okay. 
Dark Horse Comics did Indiana Jones first. Okay. So I got the assignment to do the covers for Fate of Atlantis. Oh, okay. So that was the first introduction of my artwork into the Lucasfilm licensing and, and uh, 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 production department. Mm. And so they knew my work uh, before Dark Empire. So when Dark Empire uh, came up, uh, I was originally not involved in it because Cam was supposed to do the covers as well. And then somewhere along the way, um, either either someone in uh, the Lucasfilm offices or someone in Dark Horse um, heard Cam say or, or heard Cam suggest that he wasn't comfortable doing the covers and he'd like to have me do the covers. That's awesome. So, you know, that was sort of being in the right place at the right time. Yeah. Uh, and um, I, I think, you know, obviously Dark Horse liked that idea. Uh, they talked to me first and, you know, I told them exactly what I would do. I would make movie poster like, uh, you know, pieces to capture the eye. And, and uh, Lucasfilm approved it. You know, Dark Horse hired me and uh, that's where it all started. And so that was my first work uh, uh, with Star Wars. Uh, but not the first involvement with Lucasfilm. Gotcha. Yeah. Really cool. What was maybe the last piece you worked on for Star Wars? And have you intermittently uh, maybe come on to advise with some other art stuff or uh, have any kind of involvement with kind of current Star Wars um, stuff? Uh, I've been involved in a little bit of Star Wars material okay. uh, over the past couple of years. Certainly not as much as when Dark Horse had the license. Sure. Uh, there uh, was a rumor that could or could not be true that when uh, when it moved over to Marvel, they did not want to deal with any of the Star Wars uh, creators that worked at Dark Horse. Okay. And so seeing where I sat with that, I can uh, see where that rumor might be true. Gotcha. But, uh, you know, I was able to do some uh, incentive covers for uh, uh, comic shops. Okay. Which they semi-control, but they leave it up to the shops to who they want as the artist. Sure. So I wasn't actually working for Marvel. I was working sort of around the back door. Right, for, so, for the comic shop for the comic with this shop. deal for Marvel. Right, yeah. Sure. So that's that's where I've been uh, uh, lucky to be involved with the Marvel um, comics. And I've done maybe four or five uh, covers for them. I'd love to do more, mm. really would, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, uh, but I've been doing uh, things for the Star Wars Celebration. And... Um, that's really it as far as, as licensing and, and, and production stuff goes. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I'm the old shoe at it, I guess. There's a lot of really good artists out there and, uh, you know, they may, may want a new look, I don't know. But I'm here, they know I'm here, so I'm always happy to, uh, to oblige if, if they want to hire me, but, you know. We'll see. That's the, the way commercial art work, the commercial art work goes. Right. It's um, it's just who they want to hire. There All you right. go, Mr. Dorman. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, my pleasure. Come check out Mr. Dorman next time you're able to catch him at a local convention near you. Give him a good chat. Check out his art. He has wonderful, wonderful stuff, and you can find him on his website as well. He has a lot of wonderful art posted up on his website. I believe it's DaveDorman.com. So, DaveDorman.com, yep. There you go. Give him a check out there. 